<clears throat> what is going on everybody welcome back to another video Kepakoto one so today we're going to be doing another array algorithm for the job interview algorithms for memorization and this one is primarily just called the largest sum where we're going to take an array that has positive and negative integers and find the maximum sum of that array so first off we're simply just going to create we'll call it largest nothing too uh, nothing too crazy there we're going to pass an array through it so first off, we want to make sure that the array is even an appropriate length <clears throat> in order to, to create a sum. So we're just going to have if the length of our array equals zero, well, what do we want it to do? We can return too small, nothing fancy there. So just putting in a check into the code early on that if the array is going to be, if the actual element count is going to be equal to zero, there's no point in running this code and we don't want to crash it. So we're going to tell it to print none. So first off, we're going to set the first element that is within the first index position within our array. We're going to set it to um, something that we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll name it a variable of max sum. And that's going to equal, we want another variable. And this is going to equal the first element within our array. Now we're creating two different variables, maximum sum and current sum are both equal in the arg argument, I'm sorry, the array, the first element of the index position zero. The reason that you're going to see in a second why we want two different max sums and current sums as we do the calculations. So we're just going to create a simple for loop for num in array. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we can go from, we already accounted for the first index position of array zero in line number 10. So now we want to go from the next index position, which is index position of one, the second number in the array, and go all the way to the end. So that's just going to be starting at one, and then the colon for going to the end. Then we can close it off. So in our for loop, we want to count for each number. But again, we don't need we don't have to account for the first index position because we already did here in this line. So now we can start from the second index position and go to the end of the array in this counting is essentially what we're doing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the current sum, which as you can see is set to the uh, first element in the array of index position zero. We want to we want to compare the current sum to the maximum of a new sum compared to the number that we have. So what does that mean? So we're going to redefine current sum here. We're going to say current sum is going to equal the maximum. Well, the maximum of what? Well, either the current sum, oops, a daisy, plus that number that we're going to be calculating. So this is going to this is. Um, do I have what I want to put? Oh yes, but I'm or or the number. So if we want to calculate the maximum sum, we want to we're, we're reassigning what current sum is going to mean. Let me get this out of the way here just for a second. So this is like a, a current sum tracker, if you will, this particular line. So what we're saying here is we want to redefine the current sum to equal whatever's the maximum. Is the current sum the maximum plus the number? So if it was, I don't know, let's say two, and then now the number is three. So is it the maximum five or is it the number five? I'm sorry, three, that's going to be the maximum. Whichever is the maximum, we want to add that to current sum. Well, that was stupid. And then we also want to create, um, compare the maximum sum to that current sum. So we're going to have a, we have a current sum tracker. So now we'll have a max sum tracker. So that's just simply going to equal the maximum of the current. And we're going to, we're going to, of course, debug all through this. Our current sum or the max sum. So. Let me get out of there. I don't. I don't want those greens in place. So we're tracking the current sum, which is simply whatever number that we're iterating through in this for loop. We're adding it to the previous current sum, um, and then we're or the number. We're going to compare the maximum, which is going to be greater that number, or the current sum plus the number. And then we're also going to be tracking the maximum sum, which is the maximum of the current sum, which we just computed a new current sum, or the max sum, which we already have starting at uh, our first index position of zero. So this is just creating a, um, like we said, a, a, a running sum, essentially a maximum sum, largest continuous sum of the numbers, largest continuous sum. So of course, when this is all said and done, we need to return something, right? So let's come out of that for a loop and let's just return max sum. That's what we're after. So now in order to even call this and run it so we can debug it, we're going to call our defined function we called largest. And in that largest, we're going to call the function. There we are. Now we're going to put our brackets 
to create a list. So we're going to put, um, I want to start with a not a one. So when we debug it, it makes sense in terms of the coding. Um, 10, negative 56, uh, I don't want to go too crazy. Negative 12, uh, 3, 21, negative 19. All right, so we have our array that we're going to pass through. So first off, let us uh, let me run this. Do I have largest sum even here yet? No. So let me just come across here and let me run largest continuous sum, and we're going to get 38. So at least we don't have any errors yet. Let me get this out of the way so we can see everything in one shot. Whoops, excuse me. Awesome. So now we're going to go debug this, and we're going to see exactly what's happening within, within the code. So we're going to run our debug, and this is uh, largest continuum sum. All right, so of course, once we, we're starting our debugger on our defined function, but as an FA through that, it's going to jump right down to the next executable code because we don't execute functions so, until they're called. So now we're calling it within this print function, we're calling the largest function. So we have our array. So we assume that in memory, which it did, it's going to place that array within memory. So there we have our array as a class list. So first line, if the length of array equals zero, well, that's false. So we know it's going to, it's not going to return print too small. It's going to jump out of that line. It's going to jump out of that if loop because we, it, it's greater than zero. So that's false. So we want to go to lines that are only true. So next, max sum equals current sum equals the argument is zero. So that's going to be true. So that's going to create memory. It should create the array of, um, it should create max sum equals current sum equals seven because that's the first element within our array of index position zero. So we're going to fade. So sure enough, we have max sum is seven, current sum is seven. So now we have two new variables that exist within computer memory. Now, next line for a number in the array that we created starting at index position one going all the way to the end. So index position one's already counted for in that previous line 10. So now we're gonna be starting in this example, the array of starting from number one all the way to the end. We're gonna go number by number. So first off, it puts in memory a number one. So we wanna say current sum. Let's, let's, uh, this was our current sum tracker. So current sum right now is seven. So we wanna equal the maximum of seven plus one or one. Well, clearly that's gonna be seven. I'm sorry, eight, excuse me. <laughs> so you can see up here, current sum now changed to eight. So that was appropriate. Now we're gonna work with the max sum tracker. It's good, the code's gonna take the maximum of either the current sum, which right now is eight, or the maximum sum, which is seven. So it's gonna take eight. It's gonna redefine max sum to now be eight. So if you see up here, F8, maximum sum turned to eight. So max sum is always gonna come after current sum because we're taking the maximum of this continuous value. So now the next index position of two is actually the number two. So we're gonna F8 through this. So sure enough, our number number two changed. Uh, now we're gonna do current sum is gonna equal maximum, maximum of what? Well, maximum of the current sum, which is eight plus two of 10 or two. So that's gonna turn the current sum to 10. And then the maximum is, well, the maximum of what? Well, the current sum or the max sum. Well, the current sum is 10, the max is eight. So it's going to turn it into 10. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to get a negative one. So current sum is the maximum of the current sum plus the number. So that's going to be 10 plus a negative one or a negative one. Well, 10 plus negative one is going to be nine. So it's going to create it to nine. So here we have the maximum sum. This is why we did that max sum counter because now look what happens. So far into this code, we've always seen the current sum being greater than the max sum. Now we're seeing the opposite of that. So now the maximum sum equals whatever's the maximum, the current sum or the maximum. Well, it's currently the maximum sum. We want the largest continuous um, running sum of the array. So it's not going to change the max sum to nine. It's going to keep it at 10 as we go through the next number, which is now going to be three. So now we're going to F8 through that. So now the current sum is 12, max is 10. So you know what's going to happen. It's going to turn the max to 12. And we're going to go through this. I like the negative numbers because it really brings it home. Here we go, negative 12. Let's run through current sum calculations. Now current sum is 14 because we did... 26 plus negative 12 and that was obviously going to be uh, less than uh, the number of negative 12 even though it was going to be 14 so the current sum became 14 but the maximum is now looking at well, what's greater the maximum or the current sum and clearly it's the maximum sum so it's going to take 26 and it's going to completely ignore that 14 and it's going to go to the next line of code uh, which is going to be three so now 26 is going to eventually going to come up into uh oh no see that yep so it's still 26 because current sum is only 17. We wanted the largest continuous running sum. So now we, the current sum is now finally greater than the max sum. So now the maximum sum is going to update. So there we go. Now we have maximum 38. So I'm just going to finish running through this. Negative 19 should be the last one. Return the max sum, and it sure did. We'd have another console of 38. So this is not just a simple addition. This is, we wanted to go through and find the maximum, the largest 
running continuous sum that we could find within the array. So nothing too fancy, um, nothing necessarily new here in the code. Uh, the only thing we've done a little differently than previous is we've uh, started off with both variables being tied to the same uh, input and then being adjudicated later differently, uh, depending on the running sums and the, 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 um, the sum trackers we were using, either current sum or the maximum sum. All right, guys, uh, that ends today's video. Enjoy, learn the code, run with it, play with it, find different ways to do the same thing. Um, just start to put these into memory so you have your, your interview um, algorithms at call whenever you need them. And the largest benefit of all of this is that when you um, are working on different projects, you can always say, well, I, I need to do X and uh, I can pull that from this array, or I can pull this from this array. How the hell do I go from beginning to end? How do I go reverse? Oh, I can take this from this array that I've memorized. So that's the importance of memorizing fundamental pieces early on. Uh, so then you always have them at your disposal. Um, we're also gonna be starting uh, the machine learning playlist I, sh I should be doing uh, starting that today. So look forward to it. I'll see you guys later.